Hello and good evening. Uh, welcome to Ham Radio 2.0 live from the Ham Shack. My name is Jason and my call sign is Kilo Charlie 5 Hotel Whiskey Bravo. And this video is airing on February 29th. Leap year, leap day, leap year. Monday, February 29th, 2016. <laughs> kind of a neat thing. I definitely wanted to uh, post a video this day. And... Um, just kind of a special day. We won't see it again for another four years. Uh, the next time the presidential election year comes around is when we'll see it again. So, I uh, wanted to post a video today. Thank you all for watching the Ham Radio 2.0 series. Uh, check out my website, livefromthehamshack.tv. And um, you can see all the videos I've done. You can make comments on the videos. You can follow me on YouTube. You can sign up on my email list which is linked from live on the ham TV or it's also linked from grapevine amateur radio.com so thank you very much for the support and uh, let's take a look at this video so today uh, February 29th we're going to be looking at uh, the 25 watt version of the Lyxon VV898 radio uh, this is the box for it right here. Some of you will recognize this as uh, the box is the same. They look the same as the the older 10 watt model. But there's a uh, there's a sticker here on all the boxes, and the 25 watt model has a dash S for Sierra on the back of it. Actually, there's no dash. It's just an S. VV dash 898S for the 25 watt model. Most of you ha have probably seen the Lyxon radios. The Lyxon was the first um, radio to debut the mini mobile dual band radio back, um, shoot, year, year and a half ago now, something like that. Uh, they were the first to debut uh, such a radio. Kind of like a stepping stone radio between a 5 watt HT and a full powered 50 watt mobile unit. They have these Tiny little what they call mini mobile radios that are dual band, 200 channels, and do 10 watts per band. They were the first to do it. Um, after that, Juntai, Zastone, QIT, and a couple others came out with some um, 25 watt mobile mini mobile radios in a totally different configuration. And at the time of this video, none of those radios are programmable by Chirp, but the Lyxon is. And then uh, shortly after, shortly after the June tie dropped, which I did a, I did an episode on the on how to program the June tie a while back, and then uh, shortly after the June tie dropped, uh, Lyxon came out with an upgraded 25 watt model. That's been a few months ago, so I'm a little bit behind in actually making this video. But I did want to put this uh, Lyxon VV898S on the on the video and put it on the meter and do some testing on it to see exactly what it's doing. So at the time of this video. Uh, the episode, my episode 28 from a few episodes back, is uh, the unboxing of the backpack version of the radio. Uh, so they have four different versions of basically the same radio. They have a 10 and a 25 watt model, and then they have a backpack 10 watt and a backpack 25 watt model. So you can get this Lyxon in a standalone radio, 25 watts per band, or you can get it in a backpack radio, 25 watts per band. So uh, same exact radio. Uh, it's just enclosed in the case for the backpack version with a internal battery and a fan and a power selector that you can turn off and on. So, uh, so let's take a look at the Lyxon. Lyxon's one of my favorites. Oh, and, and what I was starting to say a minute ago, uh, the Lyxons are programmable by Chirp. At the at the time of this video, uh, it it's the only one that's programmable by Chirp. Uh, the June ties and the Zastones they all come with their own uh, uh, software which you can download for free. And you have to purchase the programming cable separately. Um, so you can program them via computer, but uh, the Lyxon comes with programming cable and software, Lyxon's own version of the software. But I don't even use that. I just use Chirp. I use Chirp to program my Lyxon, and it works great. So uh, open up the box, take out the programming cable, plug it into your computer, open up Chirp, read the radio, manipulate it however you want to, shoot it back into the radio, and you're done. So uh, the Lyxon makes a fantastic radio. If I had to pick one of any of the radios right now, I would probably pick the Lyxon because they have better support and they've been around a little bit longer. Um, and I'm told that they are working on a tri-band version, which will incorporate 220 at some point. Not sure when, not sure when that's going to be out yet. Not at the time of this video. So stay tuned 
because as soon as new stuff like that comes out, I like to grab it up immediately and do a video on it as soon as possible. So at the end of this video, we will be giving away a 25-watt um, version, VV89S, not the backpack, but the standalone radio, the one we're getting ready to test here shortly in the video. So stay tuned. Um, check out my website. If you found me on YouTube, go visit livefromthehamshack.tv. And you can see all the videos I've done. You can comment on each video, and you can give me suggestions for new videos. If you uh, don't see a radio that I've reviewed and you want to see it reviewed, just shoot me an email or make a comment on a video and uh, and let me know uh, what, uh, what you'd like to see. 73, and thank you, everyone, for watching. All right, as promised, this is the bench testing of the Lyxen VV898 S model, the 25-watt version. I'm not going to do an unboxing of it. I've already done an unboxing of this radio in some previous in in a previous video. I also did an unboxing of the backpack version of the, this radio in a previous video, two separate previous videos. So visit my website livefromthehamshack.tv if you missed those, and you can see the back the uh, unboxing of both of those radios here. So this radio here is the same radio as the 10 watt model except it has an S if you look at the model number right there at the bottom right corner of the face of the radio has an S behind it. The S means that it's the 25 watt version. So we're gonna do a test here. I gotta plug this thing up. We're gonna do a test here and make sure well not make sure but I'm do an inspection on what it actually does. Let's see if it's doing the 25 watts that it advertises. So, I'm on the B band right now. Uh, let's see. These P1, P2, P3 buttons down here are programmable in the in the uh, menu. So you can set long press and short press. Let's monitor. and you can tell it to do whatever you want to. Let's scan, obviously. Okay. And so let's go change that, because I don't like that in there, right there. So we get to add a little extra feature here, and I'll show you how to change the program buttons on the front of this. So P1 long is switches between A and B. P1 short switches to the, the FM uh, radio receiver. If you want to listen to the radio on it. A lot of those radios come with this. I don't really understand it. I've never used it myself. But whatever. So I don't really like that. So I'm going to page through the menu here and say a, B is already there, so I'm, I want to switch it to v, VFO memory mode. So P1 short is now VFO memory mode. There we go. The memory is up there in the top left corner, channel 001. And now we're in VFO mode. So, let's see if I can get the mic to work here. And this mic isn't working for me. It might be locked. Let's see what this is set to. Band. That's what I want. Band right there. We'll switch between VHF, UHF. P2 short. There we go. It comes up with the 220 band, but it's only receive only on this model. Uh, sometime in the future, we might have ourselves a... Uh, Try band, but not right now. So, okay. Let's go to 520. 525, that's good enough. Got the up and down buttons on the microphone are programmed for uh, volume control right now. And again, you can change that in the menu too. So, let's go in here to the menu and find the power right there. We're going to try... It does have three power settings. Okay, we're going to try low power first. 
and we got a little L down there in the corner. You may not be able to see it. So low power on 146.525, we're getting about 3 watts. It's not bad. Normal HT power. And I'm back to high power. Low power there. Ooh, we're pegging it there. Low power on 440 is doing, oh gosh, 8 watts. So about 8 watts on 446.0. So we'll change that and we'll go to mid power on 446.0. Uh, about 15 watts there. Change that to mid power. Yeah. Uh, about 9 watts on 2 meters, 146.525. Doing about 9 watts. Mid power. And we're going to do high power. High power on 2 meters. Um, about 18 watts there, so the advertised 25 watts, doing about 18 watts on uh, 2 meters, switch back to 440, go to high power, and probably, yeah, it pegs the needle, like what I expected, these radios have been doing much more power on UHF and VHF here lately. Uh, that's right at 30 watts. Yeah, right at 30 watts. So there you go. Pushing about uh, 18 watts high power on 2 meters. And about 30 watts high power on 440. This unit does not have a fan. If you can see the top of it there. And then the back of it is just a heat sink. So you get into some long QSOs with this guy, you're probably going to be turning a little bit warm if you're pushing out 30 watts, 20, either 20 watts on 2 meters or 30 watts on 440, whichever way it may be. But as expected, this radio performs really well. The sound quality on it is good. I've, I've had good reports from multiple customers and multiple people, multiple users of the radio. Everybody seems to like it, so... There you go. That's the 25-watt version of the Lyxon uh, VV898 Sierra Mini Mobile Radio. There we go. That's the Lyxon VV898S bench testing of the radio. Like I said, the um, didn't do an unboxing because I've done that twice already. Uh, once on the radio itself and once on the backpack version of the radio. So it's the same radio. I just wanted to do, wanted to put it on a meter and do some testing and uh, see what uh, how close to 25 watts it's getting. So as you saw, uh, about 20, 18, 20 watts on VHF and about 30 watts on UHF. So if you're using it for UHF purposes, it looks like a great radio. And quite frankly, 20 watts on VHF is quite good. So um, this is, uh, I've said it before, the likes and these guys were the first ones to actually create the mini mobile radio. Shortly to follow after that was uh, June Tai, QIT, Zastone, and a couple others. And uh, Balefang Tech has one now. We've done some testing on that one on uh, Ham Radio 2.0. At least the 5000, the UV5000 model we have. I uh, haven't tested the um, the 2501 model because the same thing as the June Tai that I videoed that I did a while back. So it um, one one factory must make the cases for all these radios over there and then companies buy them and put their name on them and tweak them up a little bit they don't all work the same the zastone some of them had 2.5 kilohertz steps and some of them didn't uh some of them had some beep that people have complained about i don't remember what that was about mine didn't ever beep so i, I never experienced that but uh uh <laughs> so but it looks like most of them are probably made at the same factory over there anyway the the june tie is unique because it doesn't i'm, I'm sorry the zas the gosh the one i'm reviewing today which one is that the lyxon is unique because it doesn't look like it's not the same case as all the other ones it doesn't look like the other ones it doesn't have the same programming menu it doesn't have the same led readout 
Um, so it's it, it is its own monster, and it was the first of the 10 watt, and uh, it was the first of the mini mobile radios at 10 watts. And then I I don't think it was the first one to do 25 watts, but they they came out around the same time. And the Lyxons are cool because they are programmable with Chirp software. So I say that to people at HamFest, and about half the people's faces light up. They're like, oh, Chirp, good, yeah, great. The other people are like, what's Chirp? So I'm constantly amazed about how many people don't know what Chirp is, but I guess I should, uh, maybe I'll do a video on Chirp. Maybe I'll do a, a video how to use Chirp. But uh, go Google Chirp software. Just go to Google.com and type in Chirp. Uh, Charlie Hotel, India, Romeo Papa, Chirp software. And it's going to be probably the first, maybe the second one that comes up. It's by a, a company called Dan Planet, I think is what it is. And uh, it's free. It's it's free software that you can program dozens of radios with, including Icoms and Kenwoods and Yezus and Alinkos and Bale Fang, Waxon, uh, uh, various others. So they've been around a while. They update uh, their software often. And it works very well. Uh, they got a Yahoo group, just like everybody else does. So you can join the Yahoo group and get technical support on that. But it's free to download, free to use, free to program with. And then once you create a file, you can save it as an image file. And then you can import it to other image files to program in different radios. So you can basically take your co programming code plug and shoot it into multiple radios using Chirp. As long as Chirp will read and write to the radio, then uh, you should be able to use it to... Uh, transfer your code plug from multiple radios over. I use it for my TYT TH9800 radio. I use it for my Yezu FT8900 radio. I use it to program my Waxon UV8D and my couple of bale fangs I have for backpacking and hunting. And uh, the Lyxon that uh, that you saw here, I'll be programming that, cr programming that later on with Chirp as well. So Chirp's great software. And, of course, it's free, so everybody really likes it. So, 73, guys. Thank you for watching. Again, happy happy February 29. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what uh, 2016 brings for Ham Radio 2.0. Visit my website at livefromthehamshack.tv. You can check out all the videos I've done. 73, and have a good evening.